In today's Solo Lauren episode of the Breakpoint Podcast, we will be diving into the hottest topic on the market for both ServiceNow and tech in general, agentic AI. Specifically, what the heck it even is, how it's being used on ServiceNow, and frankly, why you should care a lot as a developer in 2025. Welcome to Breakpoint, the ServiceNow Developer Podcast. Hello, ServiceNow admins, builders, developers, and curious individuals that I say with the utmost love and respect, welcome to, or welcome back to the Breakpoint Podcast, the ServiceNow developer podcast, where we bring you all the latest tools, tips, and tradecraft to accelerate your developer career. My name is Lauren McManaman, and Happy New Year! Hopefully it's not too late to say that quite quite yet. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. You know, I hope everyone is having a awesome start to their 2025. And I figure, you know, we might as well do, I guess, what appears to be the quarterly Solo Lauren episode of the podcast. <laughs> My 2025 so far has been off to a ridiculously roller coaster start, not gonna lie. Uh, we started off really high going on an awesome cruise with all my closest girlfriends. That was amazing. Hit a little bit of a peak when I got some really nasty flu followed by bronchitis. But you know what? We're bringing it back up because Ohio State just won the national championship. So what more could I ask for as a Columbus native? Work-wise, we've also had a tremendous amount of progress already. If you wanna hear a little bit of how the sausage is made, we've already started kicking off all the internal production regimes for Knowledge25. It's hard to believe it that Knowledge is approximately 70-ish work days away. So it leaves us what seems to be a large amount of time, but it'll be quickly, quickly absolved by all the work that has to be done. In fact, one thing that I thought would be kind of fun to do this year was kind of micro blog the experience of putting on something like CreatorCon. I figured, you know, maybe people would want to join in. So if you're on LinkedIn, I want to pass you along to the hashtag no25 behind the scenes. I'll link it in the comments down below and things like that and in the production notes. But hey, I'll be posting some micro blog updates of what it's like to put on knowledge. And if you too are creating things for knowledge, whether that's labs or sessions, I would love to see your experience as well. In fact, it could probably help enable a lot of others that maybe have not participated in the knowledge experience before but might be eyeing it for Knowledge26. On top of this, our team is putting out our first of two TechNow webinars next week. We're literally one week away. I delayed this episode of Breakpoint, so it was exactly one week away from TechNow Yokohama. If you have not heard of TechNow before, that is the webinar completely dedicated to debuting the newest admin and developer features of the new release. We don't cover everything. We don't cover ITSM and HR and security. That would take hours. It's a, it's a 60 minute webinar, but every release we do this, my entire team is involved. Christy Miriam, Earl Duque, Pranav Baga, and now Travis Tolson as well. So as a team of five working on the production of Tech Now as we speak, we have entered into the final week of rehearsals and we have a very exciting show for you. So please register for Tech Now if you haven't already. I, again, I will put the link down below as well as in the show notes if you are listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. Now, obviously, the those are just a couple of highlights from my year. But before we dive into the topics, I wanted to, you know, bring the mood down slightly and just say that my heart is extended to all those currently undergoing the terrible wildfires in the LA area. Obviously, that has been horrific to see as a third person perspective here in Texas. So I, I cannot imagine going through it in real life. My heart goes out to all of you. I know what a huge developer community that we have in California in general. So please, I will also be providing links to donate to help relief from the wildfires in the links down below and also in the show notes if you are listening to this in auditory fashion. Now let's bring, mood, let's bring the mood back up a little bit. Let's get things rolling because we have a very exciting topic for today. Now, in honor of my solo episode for the quarter, I guess, let's dive straight into today's topic. And it's a topic that is definitely ringing in the ears of anyone currently in tech, in the ServiceNow ecosystem, especially anyone that is currently, I don't know, watching any form of media in the last four to six weeks. And that is agentic AI. If you've tuned into anything on TV, hopefully, like I said, watching the Ohio State Buckeyes win the national championship, you've seen Idris Elba talking about agentic AI and our new slew of commercials that have come out for ServiceNow. 
Last week, you might have also seen that ServiceNow as a company has moved to acquire another company called QIn. And in the release information for that headline, it also included the statement that the purpose for doing so was to accelerate our agentic AI roadmap. If you've been on LinkedIn, you've definitely been lambasted with post after post after post of Mr. Handsome Bill McDermott's head over the advertisement for the agentic AI live event that is happening also next week on January 29th, where specific tools are going to be debuted to the public as they are included in Yokohama and going forward. And all that is to say that in the seven plus years I've worked at ServiceNow, I have never never seen a push like this for a specific trend or product before. So it begs to be asked, what is agentic AI? So let's talk about it and why you should care as a developer in the year 2025. I think one of the easiest ways to start communicating what something is and maybe contrasting against what it is not. For starters, agentic AI is different from the heavily popularized generative AI. If you're going off of metaphors, it would be very wise for you to compare the element of generative AI to polling a crowd, right? Now, granted, that crowd is the size of probably the entire population of Earth and can react in a way that no human being ever could, but it is pretty much the same. You are asking a question to some sort of trained entity that represents an entire ecosystem of information and it is pulling all that together to give you its best attempt at an answer. If you're looking for things in media that compare to this, pretty much any show where the protagonist is saying, computer, what is da 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 da? That is an example of generative AI. For one, it's reactive. These computers or these algorithms or these AIs are not necessarily going off on their own. They are responding to a specific question or to a specific prompt. They are also extremely dependent on having as large and as informed of a quote unquote crowd as possible. The more the more data that generative AI is trained on, the more comprehensive and accurate of an answer that it can provide. If you were using one of the artistic rendering AIs, for example, that had only been trained on Pablo Picasso's work, asking it to create a picture of a rabbit might give you unexpected results. You would want it trained on the entire work of art at the Louvre and the modern art museum and historical artwork, etc. Agentic AI, while obviously also AI, is different than this. If the media comparison for generative AI is to Batman asking his computer to find data, the agentic AI comparison would be like the AI from the movie Her with Joaquin Phoenix or the AI in the episodes revolving around cookies in Black Mirror. Unfortunately, all the examples of agentic AI in media are not the nicest, so please don't let that cloud your judgment, but that's oftentimes how it is used in sci-fi. The first stark difference is agentic AI is proactive, not reactive. It not only can anticipate what work or what things need to be automated, but can also improve the process as it acts upon it over time. And this is all without being asked to do so. In addition to this, agentic AI is much less dependent on the size and variety of the information that it's trained off of. You could have an agentic AI that's trained off of all the world's knowledge of workflow automation, for example. However, let's say that as a customer, you would want an agentic AI system that acts a lot specifically like ServiceNow. In that case in point, you would train it specifically off of ServiceNow workflows, ServiceNow behavior, ServiceNow's architecture. And therein lies the real distinction. This is just the beginning of agentic AI moving into the market. And I think moving forward, you will see it branch off into much more more specifically trained agents than something that is overall holistic in its response. It is a very likely reality that in the future moving forward, not only will you be doing your job, but you might have two specifically trained agentic AI clones of your work behavior, helping you remove the minutia from your day. Now, obviously that is much further down the line than we are at right now. So what does this actually mean for the ServiceNow platform as it exists in Yokohama? Now, I'm a little bit ahead of the game. 
We will list out the specific functionality for our Agentic AI release on January 29th. Again, link below to please register for that event. But I think the first thing I need to do is provide some clarity as the nomenclature of this release has people a bit confused. With the interface that it's using in the screenshots, as well as its name as AI agents, a lot of people have been popularizing the notion that it's something to do with virtual agent. Like it's a beefier version of virtual agent, which could not be farther from the truth. In virtual agent, you are specifically designing conversations and exactly the different type of outcomes that that conversation could elicit. You could have a myriad of answers, but you are still specifically channeling people into predetermined buckets. And if you recall, agentic AI does not work in that fashion. As part of its definition, agentic AI is a proactive, independently acting entity. So there's no predetermined buckets that you would have to program into these AI agents at all. Instead, the roadmap for our AI agents looks something like this. Let's say for example, that you work for a company's support desk team where you do things like addressing tickets that are coming in from your customer base, resetting passwords and escalating things as they see fit. These AI agents could do exactly that completely on their own. It could not only do that around the clock and know when things were routine enough to act on its own, but it would also be smart enough to know when to escalate things for human intervention because optimally that is the goal of AI. I will say this, AI has had to do a lot to win me over. As far as our team goes, I was one of the bigger skeptics of AI. As someone very passionate about art and the human element of art, I think that is initially what triggered such a sour response to generative and subsequently agentic AI. But more and more with how I have seen it applied in customer use cases, the more it has turned the tide of my opinion because I've seen what it is really for. The goal of AI with regards to automation in tech, in corporate America, it is not to remove the human element. It is to maximize the time for it. It is there to free us up from the countless routine types of tickets that anybody could do. RPA could do it, a really heavy flow could do it. But now we have AI agents that we don't even have to program to do it. Again, this is talking very big picture and where ServiceNow is ideally heading towards as a company moving forward. But if you would like to see what specifically AI agents can do in Yokohama, and I will tell you, I was blown away by this presentation, please join the live. It's called the AI Agent Live Launch. It is January 29th and I hope to see you there. Now, to all the AI nihilists, kind of like myself out there that are saying, ah, oh, this is another big tech trend. This is the same as you know putting design wizards and everything and low code and everything. It's just gonna be another Another bump in the roller coaster of corporate America. Let me really shatter that illusion for you. Like I said initially, I have never in my seven years working here and almost 10 total working on the ServiceNow platform seen our company invest in a functionality like this. Agentic AI is not just another buzzword, is not just another trend for companies to hop on and hop off as the years go by. It is a paradigm shift for what work will be in the 21st century. First, consider the scaling perspective that this offers companies. Sure, AI agents cost money. You will see that in any single platform that offers some form of agentic AI moving forward. It's going to cost money. However, AI agents do cost less than another full-time employee or even possibly a part-time employee. Now, again, that's not as to say that everyone's gonna get replaced with AI, far from it. Instead, imagine something like this. Every single team from IT to HR, having their own AI agents to handle all the grunt work people put off doing anyway so that they can appropriately scale the human element. And that's not even considering the added impact of decision-making that this really offers people. For anything that you do in your job, think of the most routine thing, something that you could do with your eyes closed in a heartbeat, AI can do it faster. Not only that, but AI can do it in the middle of the night when you're asleep or possibly when you're in the bathroom or on a work break or on PTO. AI doesn't have the human element of rest baked in. So instead of coming back from a cruise like I did with a humongous pile of stuff that really didn't take too much brain power to get through, but took a phenomenal amount of time to get caught up on, what if you came back from PTO and 
those types of things were already taken care of. Again, this might be one of the more futuristic steps of agentic AI, but think about how it can be fine-tuned to match aspects of real people that have left their impact on a specific process. Let's say that you had set up Agentic AI to handle very specific routine emails a team was getting. And however good Agentic AI is, let's say that the responses were coming off a bit wooden. But maybe there's a person on your team that statistically has a pretty good rate on return on these type of emails. Maybe it's their style or the speed in which they respond or the time of day in which they do their work. But whatever that is, let's say that they statistically have the warmest response to those type of emails. The agentic AI could be trained specifically off that. It's remember, it's not generative AI. We can make this as specific and niche as possible for the processes that we're utilizing agentic AI for. Flows and automation were the first step in abstracting away the minutia from people's everyday jobs, allowing them to do that impactful work that only humans can do. And agentic AI is just the natural next step to that process. Now, before closing up today's discussion about agentic AI, I wanna give a huge shout out to Earl Duque on our team, where I have been probably the big, the big spooky nihilist about AI. He has been the AI champion. And a lot of the information today that I've presented on is directly taken from something that he did internally for our team. So I wanted to give a shout out to him and thank him for also helping open my eyes to the prospects that agentic AI is really going to offer, not only people on ServiceNow, but on other platforms and in the corporate ecosystem moving forward. Again, I'm gonna keep hammering at home because I'm part of the marketing department. We have the AI agent launch on January 29th, 2025 at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I hope to see you in the comments because I will definitely be there as well. I can't wait to see your actual live opinions on everything baked into Yokohama. Additionally, the day immediately after is tech now. So if you're like, ah, oh, I wanna see everything relevant for admins, builders, and developers, join us for that webinar. And I will, again, I'll include the link to register for that webinar below. That's at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time on January 30th. Also, if you've made it this far into the podcast, then I have a little sweet treat for you as well. Just a reminder that historically, at least, there's no confirmation. I can't make any promises, but historically, the most recent release available happens to go on to PDIs on EA as well, which is the day we are doing tech now. So not only should you keep your eyes and ears open for information coming out of tech now, but also be sure to keep refreshing that developer.servicenow website to ensure that you are one of the first people that gets to experience Yokohama completely for free. Now we're keeping things short and sweet to start off the new year. So I want to say thank you, wonderful listener for joining me here today. Don't forget to check out the other amazing ServiceNow podcasts. You can find them on the community site under the events tab. Don't ask me why. Also subscribe. You can subscribe here on YouTube if you are watching the video version or as well on any podcasting provider, whether that be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. One thing I would like to start encouraging you to do is also leave us a review. If you have not ever reviewed Breakpoint before, we are trying to expand the audience that is consuming it. So leaving a positive review helps us do just that. Breakpoint is brought to you by ServiceNow with me, Laura McManaman as the producer. To find out more about the ServiceNow developer program and to get one of those Yokohama PDIs, go to developer.servicenow.com. Again, thank you so much for joining me here today, wonderful listener. Stay hungry, stay humble, and have a fantastic start to 2025. Cheers. Please let us know what you think about this podcast. You can leave feedback or ask questions in the ServiceNow community. For more great information on ServiceNow development, check out the ServiceNow developer portal at developer.servicenow.com. Thanks for listening. Agentic AI. <laughs> Can't wait to see how that comes out on the video. <laughs> what even is agentic AI? <laughs> Little ASMR for you guys.